Hello and welcome back. This is 2T Time on Plus TV Africa. If you're joining us for the first time, we have talked away our talk. Now we have a special guest in the building and that is Anike Ade Funke Treasure. And she's an author of Memories of Grammar and two books in the Basic Pronunciation Guide for Second Language Speakers of the English Language Series, mouthful. She has a Bachelor's in Education, English Language, and a Master's in Journalism and Media Studies from Rhodes University, South Africa. An alumnus of Thompson Foundation, Pointer Institute, Florida, and Pan Atlantic University, Lagos. She runs a table tennis championship and a sanitary pad initiative for girls. Please welcome Get treasure. Mm. Hi. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you. That is, Thank you so much. It's, 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 it's a very interesting biography as well. I think it's quite diverse. You have PAD, which is in the health. You have tennis, which is in the sports. sports. Then you have education and language, which is one entire thing. And then we have media and communications and journalism. And then we also have a sprinkle of international there. We have Lagos, we have South <laughs> Africa, we have Atlantic. Like, hey, what's going hey, on? Like the beauty queen. It, I mean, I, there's all of that presence going on. You know, it's like a full Thank package, you. a lot Thank of packages you. in one. How yeah. has that been for you? That cannot have been like, that didn't happen like this. No, it didn't. There was once upon a time I was a very shy girl. Once upon a time I needed a lot, a lorry load of confidence mm. um, and to believe in myself. Mm. But once I got the rhythm, I mean, it was just okay, just do, do it. Mm. Uh, you know, just be yourself and do yourself. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. You want to write, you feel the urge to write, you write. You feel the urge. I was once a, a, an actress, by the way. Okay. Yeah. And I, I worked with the late James C. Roja, also known mm. as Green Gori, mm, back I then. Know. Right. So I just express myself. I just, mm. whatever talent is inside of me, I let it show. But of course, you know the, the thing about the curse of the multi talented. Mm. Um, so you have to pick, say, three top Priority. talents that you have and work on that. Mm. For me, that would be training, writing. And speaking. If you say training, who are we training? What, like okay, the so sports, the tennis? No. Uh, so if you say um, media training, I'm right. into that. Leadership training. Right. I'm a John Maxwell um, team right. coach. And so I talk about transformation so and leadership. Would we, would we call that even like consulting? So, yes, okay. consulting. Right. So you okay. find me doing a lot of trainings in leadership and media. Okay. And when I say media, it's the entire gamut because I did I was once a columnist with the mm. Guardian newspaper, with New Age newspaper. CV, you know. I'm just falling in love more. Oh, really? More as Thank you. Speak. you. <laughs> Thank you. you yeah. know. So, so it's, been a, it's been a lifetime of uh, doing this and that. Well, let's talk about what's displayed. I'm sure the viewers are already wondering, what's on the table? We don't really have things <laughs> on the table. There's tracks, there's different books. Let's, let's talk about that. What brought you to write these things? Especially in Nigeria, we're well, not that much of like, an author convenient atmosphere we don't really have that much backing like we do a brother at least from what i've noticed but you still have that you've had you even have more than one so what's pushing you why, why you why do you have this um, craving to do this right so i started writing <clears throat> when i was a presenter on radio um i, I, I was a yeah, radio personality. <laughs> I'm just dropping you. the balls here and there, sprinkling here, sprinkling so, here. So the thing is, I was a presenter for years, so about 23 years of my life. So um, at some point as a breakfast show anchor, I thought about the, 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 the misses, the gaps in, in, in our cultural heritage I was beginning to see at that time. I was, I was experiencing young people passing by elders and not seeing hello and mm. not helping with the you know bags and stuff and you know giving you stuff with the left hand mm. and and i said to myself this will this will not happen in my time when i was growing up mm. and if we weren't careful in the in the guise of globalization we would lose our cultural identity so i started wanting to write about my childhood and so i started writing mm. and it, it became a memoir um, and i didn't give flesh to it until I went for my master's in South Africa, and that's when I had the time 
to put it together. The first edition came out then. So what you have in this book is a collection, is this written in short story format, yet it has a central thread running through. So you nice. find the, the beginning mm. and the end, but then the, the, the chapters can stand on their own. Mm. So what I've done is to celebrate my grandmothers and the socialization into our Yoruba cultural heritage that I had with them. I nice. celebrated our food, our clothing, our, you know, organic setting at the beginning. Mm. Those are the things you find here. And yes, again, the folk songs and the folk tales grandma told back then. So essentially what I was doing is elevating the folk tales into something shareable, like mm. this uh, particular soundtrack to the book, and then getting a workbook so that when, when children read, this is a book for children and, and adults, and people have asked me, how have you been able to do that? I don't know, I just wrote. And I wrote from the eyes <clears throat> of a 10 year old. Mm. So I'd love both adults and, uh, and, and children to read and then check out what they're reading with a right. workbook. Mm. Right. So right now it came out with a workbook and a soundtrack. All right, so nice. one thing I really want to talk to you, because I've known you for a while and I know about your of course, your media presence and all of that. And, um, you know, being on The Advocate, which is one of the shows. And I know how articulated you are when it comes to speaking and when it comes to putting things together. But one thing I never knew about was the books. And um, mm, okay. because, OK, maybe I, I, I probably didn't think that way because a lot of people don't focus on reading in Nigeria, especially when we're losing our reading culture. Mm. You know, you tell you tell some Nigerian kids these days, or some Nigerian kids will tell you, if you want to hide anything from my child, just put it in a book. You will mm. never open it. She right. will never open it. Mm. <laughs> do you understand? That's so, sad. That's really that's sad. Terrible. So how do you think we can, you know, change that narrative mm. of people not reading and encourage kids? You know, because I went through this and it was so easy for me to read and mm. assimilate. But a lot of things are really stressful for some other people. Mm. So how do you think we can change that narrative well <clears throat> that's really sad because outside nigeria you're on the train you're reading yep. you're on the mm. bus yeah. you're reading mm. uh you're in a taxi you're, there's a reading culture there's a, there's a culture of reading mm. and and sometimes i do not agree that we do not have a reading culture in nigeria because we have our phones and some of us read a lot of stuff on mm. the phone yeah. because it's convenient mm -hmm. and you don't have to carry the 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 matter around with you yeah. so you just flip and i mean this this book is in here yeah. so you don't have to buy this you can yeah. just read it here so it makes it easy mm. so i don't really believe that we don't have a reading culture just because we're not logging books up and down mm. but even that uh, um having said that what i'm doing at the moment is trying to put the book in an audio form mm. Mm. so that you get well. to you know, drive your car, listen to it, or put it, you know, in your phone and plug, you know, mm, right. your ears and listen, listen to it. Some will receive it that way. The thing is, we've evolved over time and we all, um, uh, um, what do I use now? We all read in different ways. Yeah. I don't have to read and, you know, open yeah. the pages yeah. like this and, and you see and, me and, reading. And I think I appreciate the fact that you're trying to <clears> also <throat> stay innovative and keep with the trend, keeping things, you know, as digestible as possible. I'm also a reader, I'll give you that, and I don't carry my books around, and I love pages, but when you explain that book, I caught my sob because I'm very westernized. I didn't have my adults here, so there's some things that you were saying, I was just feeling a jab at me, like, eh, yeah, eh, sure. eh, because, you know, um, I'm not, I don't have have that culture and I'm quite disconnected from that. I, I think I've even gotten to a point where I don't even appreciate it because I, it wasn't valued in my reality. So that for me was like, I need to read this book because it, I know that what's written in there is something that I probably would not think about on my own because I don't function that way. But because we're running out of time, I want quick, quickly for you to please explain, especially for viewers who are having the hunger, especially like I'm having, that they want to read this book. Where can they find it? How can they buy it? How can they purchase it? If they're also feeling you and your green sleeves and everything about your mind, and your beauty, and they want to go support you, where can they also do that really quickly? Right, let me quickly say, once upon a time, back in the UK, I met with a surgeon who's from Ethiopia, mm. and we went to a restaurant, and we didn't sit on chairs like this. We, it was an Ethiopian themed on the restaurant, on right. the floor. I've been there. On the floor, you've been there, <laughs> yeah. right? Beautiful, so yeah. that's the thing about retaining your cultural identity mm. in this wild, world mm. that we live in so what i've done in this book is to celebrate our cultural our way of life our mm. values our heritage having said that you can get this book by um 
getting onto my fan page, uh, Funke Treasure Doodala, that's where you find me. That's my fan page. And you can also find me on um, Instagram. And you can, you can send um, a request to the number. I'm going to call, call the number. Of course, feel free. Okay, 0814-793-7878. Okay. All right, so let me quickly put you uh, on the spot. We finally. have to and Twitter, go. And Twitter, we Funke have to go. We, have, we, have, we have to. We have to Twitter, have Twitter, okay. Twitter, okay. Funke okay. underscore okay. treasure. <laughs> awesome. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know why. time. Understand. Yes, please. We'll, we'll bombard you with more questions. Uh, right. Please do stay tuned. We have one more guest in the building before we let you go. Stay tuned, guys.